Welcome back, YouTube. Captain Quinn here with another rip, rip, ripper of a uh, fly tying series. Today, we're working with deer hair. This is from a deer that I shot and murdered and ate for a trip. Anyway, I, I, it was delicious. I haven't eaten it at all. And this is my first also attempt at skinning it, or uh, sorry, tanning a hide. And I missed a lot of, it doesn't stink though. I don't know. I definitely did a lot of things wrong, but for the purposes that I needed this hide for, tying muddler minnows and caddises, it's gonna do just fine. So go out, kill yourself a deer, and skin it, tan its hide, leave the fur on, the hair on, and you'll have a lifetime supply of muddler minnow and caddis, dry fly, tom thumbs, whatever, you name it, you'll never run out of materials again. So let's get started. This is gonna be probably the most badass muddler minnow you've ever seen, and muddler minnows are deadly. Deadly, deadly, deadly flies. Steel water cutthroat, um, steelhead, bull trout, brook trout, any other kind of trout. Uh, brown trout, you use them for brown trout, storm back east. Sometimes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes he says, says sometimes. So if you're from Ontario and you fish for brown trout, sometimes you can use this. Mother minnow. Uh, and who's responsible for teaching me how to tie this? Rod Brown, Rob Brown, fly fishing legend. So I start at the top and I work my way back down. This wobbly tail, table to the tail. First I'm gonna wet my whistle. I have pheasant's tail here. And I'm gonna take a piece of the tail that's near the end of the feather. And I'm gonna take few sprigs from each side there so I got one from the left side of the, the feather and one from the right side of the feather I'm just gonna make a tiny little tail I want to wrap it back a little bit more this is gonna be a decent sized muddler and that should do the trick to me and then, so this part, you want the, the feathers to sit right vertical on the shank of the hook. And I'm dealing with a pretty small or medium sized hook here. I kind of pinch it in my thumb, the thread. So it's like that between my thumb and my pointer finger. And then I tighten it up and I pull straight down. Then I'll do that again, straight down. There you go. That's a deadly looking tail. And then I'll just cinch that into place. Trim the excess there. And away we go. There you go. That's a deadly looking tail. That's perfection, as a matter of fact. Now I'm gonna beef up the, I'm gonna leave lots of room for the head. Probably have my head starting there. Now I'm gonna beef up the body with some silver tinsel and some gold ribbing. So first I'll secure the, the gold ribbing down here at the tail. And then I'll wind my way to the head. Oops. I have it starting there. And I'll attach the tinsel And this is about where I'm gonna start the head. And then I'm gonna wrap the tinsel down the body. And then back up. Just for a little bit beefier. Now obviously the muddler minnow is representing a minnow. Um, to me it looks most like a uh, sculpin. A little bullhead sculpin pattern which live in rivers and lakes and, and actually the ocean. We used to catch them as kids. You just put them in a bucket and just admire admire them. They're pretty cool little little fish. They can spike you too. They got little spikes on their on the outside of their gill plate. Spiky buggers. Now 
I'll cut that off. There you go, there's a nice sexy body. Then I'm gonna take the gold ribbing and I'm just gonna crank that in. And that's gonna hold the, the body, the tinsel in place, keep it from falling apart and getting broken. And then also give a little bit of um, some more character to it, the gold ribbing. Ribbed for his and her pleasure. There you go, I joke. Definitely, probably, is overused. There you go. So there's the body of my minnow. Now, what I like to do is I'm just going to apply a little Bambi. Excuse me. Bambi. I seem to have forgotten some material. Oh, there we go. The IV polar dubbing plucked from the nutsack of a flamingo. Um, and I'm just going to pick that apart in my fingers, spin it right on to this little baby here, and just give that a couple wraps right around the head where my head is going to start. And just a little bit of a, a ball there. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna put a wing on it, a red wing, a red wing, because I don't know if you guys have seen, and this is another little tip from Rob Bur Rod Bur Rob Brown. I know a Rod Brown, and I know a Rob Brown, so you can imagine how confusing that is for me and my small brain remembering those two names and differentiating between the two in conversation. Very small brain. What the size of a goldfish? You know a goldfish only has a memory of five seconds or something? So I took the uh, goose feather and I cut about eight sprigs off each side. And then I'm gonna take them and I'm going to put them together. So they're, they're, are, they're kind of like paired. I'm gonna pair them. And I want the tips to be roughly the same. And I'll just massage the tips. There we go. And I'm gonna put them so they're, they're arching down. I'm gonna put them to just past the tail. And once again, as with the tail, I wanna pinch the thread between my thumb. See all that slacks there? You don't want slack when you're fighting a fish, but when you're tying a fly and you're securing two goose feathers, paired goose feathers, this is what you want. You, you pinch the fly between your index and your thumb, your pointer and your thumb, and then you tighten it up slowly, and then you just pull straight down. And that'll lock it nicely right on the shank of the hook so it's nice and vertical like that and then you can secure it in place and I'll cut this is a bit of a longer tie you have to be patient with the muddler definitely very patient but that's gonna look nice and so was I talking about coho fry a second ago I think I was um, they have orange tails and orange fins and kind of there's some orange that's why I'm putting the red in and so this coho fry they're emerging out of the gravel right now and everything is gorging on them gorging gorging themselves so it's a perfect fly to use in the spring uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of um, some guinea guinea fowl guinea ham purple polka dotted chicken thing and I'm gonna take just a little sprig of that just to give the fly a little bit extra body. And I'm going to secure it by the top end. And I'm just going to give one or two wraps and that'll help this baby swim real nicely. Give some purple, some darker features to it. Contrast. Just have fun with it like Bob Ross would say. And there you go, one, one's probably
probably in math, but I'm gonna go two. And actually, you're starting to see. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, God, Captain, that looks deadly already. That would swing and catch fish, and you're right, it would. But we're gonna muddler mineral mineral mineralize it. Muddler mineralize it. Um, it's a new word that I just invented for turning flies into muddler minnows. It could be other standalone flies. So there we go. Wrap back the fly. Now I don't know that I've given myself much enough room for the head, but. We're gonna go for it. We're gonna see how this all pans out. I'm just gonna whip finish this in case it, it's I break my thread because when you're spinning deer hair, you have to apply some pressure, and sometimes that pressure can cause you frustrations because it inevitably leads to broken thread. So now I'm gonna take my wicked lifetime supply of deer hair. And I'm gonna find, oh, which one, which one? So many to choose from, so many. There's probably a billion deer hair here. And I'm just going to pick some of it. So I got a sprig of deer hair here, a few sprigs. And I'm gonna secure it. I want it to run back to almost the butt of the fly. And bam, right straight down, bam, right straight down. that in place. So then you see how it's kind of all over the place here. But you see how it's sticking up and you have the ends here and then you have the, the cut ends here and the natural ends here. I want to, to secure this place so it doesn't spin all the way around the hook. Now this is the first application of deer hair. This is important because you don't want your muddle or nose head to be bobbling all over the place. So I'm going to wrap diagonally through this bunch, back down, diagonally through this bunch, back down, and I'm really going to just secure it in place by kind of crisscrossing the thread through the deer hair. I'm going to do that a few times, because I don't want this thing spinning on me with this portion of it. There you go. Now, that looks good to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it back. Down, shank of the hook. And then I'm, I'm going to secure it. Now, for the spinning of the deer hair. This is all going to be trimmed up and tidied up later, don't worry about it. So I'm going to take another sprig of deer hair. We're going to apply the trimmed deer hair. Cut on both ends because this is going to be the head and we're going to shape it later. We're going to stick it across the shank of the hook. We're going to wrap once, twice, loose wraps, and then we're going to slowly pull. And as we pull, the deer hair is going to spin around the shank of the hook. Sometimes you can give it just a little bit of help. There you go. Another wrap down the middle. Should be enough. And you should have to check that it's kind of even on all sides there. There you go. You already kind of see it taking shape. So I'm going to secure it again. And then I'm going to kind of do like a, a figure eight. I'm going to go kind of diagonally, run alongside of the fibers back. Oh, you dirty place. And then the other way, running just kind of on a diagonal across the kind of with the fibers and back and then another and then another and this is going to secure the baby in place and then one right down the middle two right down the middle and then I'm going to push all of the deer hair back just real wrench on it really crank on it Get it back into place and then hold it back come forward and lock her in with a couple wraps so that's probably enough to shape into a, a wicked head already but I'm gonna do one more app like 
I'm gonna apply one more batch of hair here to make it a nice solid head. Same thing, right down to the hide. You got your cut end, then you have your natural end. I'm gonna take the natural end and I'm just gonna cut it off because we're gonna shape it all later. And then you wanna kinda take all the fluff out of it too. Because that kinda messes with you when you're securing it. Once again, I'm gonna apply it down a lot lengthwise along the shank of the hook. One wrap in the middle, loose, two wraps in the middle, loose, and then slowly tighten. And you might have to help it along. And the deer hair kinda spins around the shank of the hook. Third, wrap, and away you go. And then I want to lock it all in place, so I kind of do diagonal hoof, diagonal hoof, diagonal hoof, diagonal hoof, and they're called hoofs. That's the actual technical term. And then right down the middle, a couple hoofs, and then I'm going to pull it all back. Really wrench on her. And then I'm gonna come forward with the thread, right through, break on through to the other side. Okay, okay. And then we're almost done. So I can whip finish that. Bingo, bango. Ooh, we got another dirty Bongo. Oh, God, perfect timing. I just, I wanna put another wrap on that. Just because I don't trust my not kind of hard on flies. Hard on. I just don't know what that was. Okay, there we go. One, two, three. Bingo. Now depending on what you're drinking when your time flies, this could take you a while. Okay, so get this mangy deer hide out of here. There we go, so far so good. We're looking good, and now we're gonna shape it. So I wanna leave, so the first batch of deer hair that I applied, I'm gonna leave that. So I'm just gonna kinda pinch that down along the shank of the hook, and I'm gonna let all the ones with cut ends kind of spring forward. Now this is kind of like a delicate procedure here. You almost need to be a brain surgeon to pull this off properly. And I am not. I barely have a brain in my head. Uh, and then I'm gonna shape it kind of like a bullet. So I'm gonna kind of put it on an angle here at the eye, angling up at a 45. And I'm gonna make that first cut. And then the same thing over here. Some people use razors, but I don't. I use razors for shaving my thighs, not time flies. I've tried razors, it doesn't, I don't find it works that well. Just a pair of scissors is fine. Turn it into, make it look like the head of a fish. Try not to cut any of your This part can take some time. Be patient. Take your time with it. You can kind of just shear it off kind of flat on the end because a bullhead kind of have these weird shovel heads. Just kind of try to make it symmetrical. Here's the trick. Here is the final finale, the grand finale. I am going to take a lighter, a Bic lighter, and this is really gonna make the head compact. It's gonna take all of the loose ends and just shrink them right up. Blasts. 
and then it really takes shape and what you're left looking at get a little line is just a really deadly muddler minnow man that's as sexy as they come like so there you go it's a beautiful muddler minnow i would totally swing that um and we're gonna give this this away to a young gentleman who's been requesting that i tie the muddler minnow so thanks for your comments and i'm gonna give this away down the road i'd like to get out to the field and like to test them I'd like to make sure they work before i give them to you so i've already started doing that and that'll be a separate series but you're all gonna get these flies i'm gonna tie a few more and then they're they're all yours so Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy it. Comment below if you wanna wanna see what else you wanna see. Yeah. Right straight to the point. Thanks for watching. See you next time.